Hey all, this is Artsy Wisdom. My name is Diane. Thank you for coming by. Uh, gonna tiptoe back into politics again. As of yesterday, uh, the hundred and I think sixty-eight pages or one hundred and sixty-page brief that Jack Smith uh, sent to Judge Chutkin to have her analyze and decipher and dissect which is presidential immunity. He made the case for it being private um, actions by a private person. Um, and all that's been detailed and left for the public to, to see. We had the debate since I saw you last, which came out similar. I'll go over that. I also had um, somebody ask about looking into Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones and Marilyn Monroe, who apparently is hard to reach. Uh, I've done this uh, last video, a couple of videos ago. I, I get into people's energy in the soul level. I had done Jim Morrison and Janis Joplin. And some of this, for entertainment purposes only, is an experiment. And I try to get to, I travel into their situation, what they learned, what they needed to learn here, what their attitude was, the lessons. So I, I looked into that. So I'm going to do that again this time. So we got the politics, we had the debate. I looked into um, J.D. Vance, I'll share with you an image I got. You may laugh, you may not, um, but it's sort of um, accurate to me. Uh, yeah, and I think that is it. What else happened? Oh, horrible, horrible Hurricane Helene is still, they're still finding people's bodies, unfortunately. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And those people that have passed have moved on. Still in shock, I think. Sometimes you don't know you've, you're not, a, you're not here anymore and you stick around to talk to your loved ones or to connect with them before you move on. Sometimes that happens, um, but it, it doesn't matter. I, my point is that let's send love and light and healing prayers to all those that have been affected by this terrible hurricane and this shift in climate and in the future, because I've said this before, the past, the present and the future are all right now so let's look and send loving light to the people who make decisions in leadership and help help them understand and let go of any political differences so they can make decisions which which are best for humanity in the long run and listen to the scientists because they like are uh, no things um and they usually don't have an agenda but thank you anyway, let's get started thank you for all who come back and watch my videos appreciate I read. all my new subscribers a couple people have complained about um, uh, advertising in the middle of my videos i'm going to just turn that off so um because it's just it doesn't need to be there um and i appreciate you guys keep coming back and giving me that information and feedback. The other thing I wanted to remind people, and I said this last time, is that past life regression, if you're um, interested in that, you can do it remotely from your own home. In that one video I did, I forgot to mention that. It is actually more comfortable and you're actually at ease more because you're in your own environment. And most of the time your eyes are closed anyway. And I can, you know, we have a connection over video and you can wear your headphones or not and listen to me. And it's recorded and then you just talk like you would in on any video and talk to me and it's really easy and natural there's nothing to be afraid of it's all um like when you're relaxed like just like when you're sleeping and or napping or in that place where you're in a little bit of a dreamland that's what it's like and then we get to your subconscious and you can get to certain things that you're interested in finding out and many times that's about past lives and we can travel there and I guide you through that anyway just wanted to sh share that with you so if you're interested in that let me know you can email me so I am going to start with um, the um, Brian Jones I had no idea who this was I'm not you know I'm old but I'm I guess I just didn't know about the stones Brian Jones he was a early member 
um, one of the founding members, he died young. I looked him up just so I knew who he was. I recognized his face once I saw it, and he died young because he drowned. And there's some people said that he was alcohol and drugs had something to do with it. Like he was in the pool and he, they found him and he died. So, um, when I close my eyes and I get into his energy, this is what I do. I travel into this person's soul level to see, and I look like I do with even politicians like Trump or Harris or Walls or whoever. And I look from their perspective. So I do that. So I'm going into his, um, person remotely and, um, in that picture I saw of him, he had like this Bob, you know, beetle league kind of long shaggy haircut, which they started to do in the early 60s. And I feel like I'm holding a guitar. Um, is he left-handed? Because I feel like I'm doing like this. Totally could be off base. But I feel like I'm strumming like this. And he... Um, I feel like I'm young. I feel like I'm young, like teenager when wanting to be play music and be in a band. And um, I know he was English. Brian, can I talk to you? I see you, him writing down with his left hand, like writing music, writing lyrics, writing. So I don't know if he wrote some songs um, before he left the band or they kicked him out. I'm not sure what happened. Um, he feels very, the word, I don't ever use this word, irrational, irrational, irrational. I don't even know what that means. It's a funny thing. I've not, I don't know if I've used that word in my entire life, maybe on a paper in college, but I don't even remember doing that. Irrational. That's the word that comes to mind with him. So I feel like it's agitated. Um, antagonistic like he can't calm himself down um rough but anyway so him, I see him writing I feel him very excited I feel like I want to get part of this like it was before the stones were even a thing they weren't even together yet it was just him and him thinking about what he wanted to do <laughs> and I'm hear him saying this is I was happy here. This was the moment that I was happy um, when I was feeling really good about myself. And well, I wasn't feeling good about myself, but I wanted to get feeling better. And I love feeling this um, enjoyment of music and writing. And it was like, I can feel this feeling. And it's the same feeling I get when I'm painting and I see the vision in front of me and I go, oh, I'm getting it. I see that. And it's like, it's the creative spirit you know, the expansion. Um, I feel like an outsider. I don't feel like, and I have no idea the way that they coalesced the Mick Jagger and them and Keith Richards and all them. I have no idea if they were childhood friends and he was, but I feel like I'm an outsider. And this is still when I'm young. So, um, Like they're there and I'm here. Maybe you didn't know them and you introduced yourself. Like he's around, but not exactly best buddies or anything. And he wanted to um, make himself visible. He was super excited and he wanted to. Do... I have no idea if any of this is right, but all of a sudden I'm drawn to pull, pull one of these cards I don't usually, but I have them out here. And all of a sudden I looked over and they caught my eye. So I feel like I'm going to. And these are the archetype cards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look on top. The stone. <laughs> Can't make that up. The stone. The rolling stones. So he was one of the stones. He was the stone. Maybe he was the original. Maybe he was trying to be um, the uh, foundation. Because... Obviously, drugs and, and all that was part of their lifestyle at the time, but 
at this point when I'm feeling him, like, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, even 17, I don't feel like he was doing that yet. I feel like he was, my, he was um, irascible, but he wasn't, I want to say mild-mannered. He wasn't mild-mannered, but he was excited, creative, expanding. Okay, so I see somebody taking him. They all come together. He's part of this group. Yeah, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, if he started it and he got them all together. But I feel like I see Mick Jagger bringing him in, or it's like right there, like he's pulling him in like this. So I don't know who came first or what. It is getting cold here, so my nose. Um, okay, let's go back. Okay, I see Mick Jagger opening his arm, pulling him in. They're all there. They're all together. All right. Oh, feeling good. He feels like he is happy, but okay. Immediately, I don't feel like he is being heard. I feel like he wants to be number one, like he wants to be the leader. And it's not like they don't like him or anything. It's like he has a different version of what he wants to be in this band. I think he thinks... He needs to be in charge or he has better ideas and they are maybe Mick is the one that's calling the shots or they're all closer. That's what it is. They're all closer and they're not quite listening to him. And you guys can correct me, like I said, but that's the feeling I get. So or maybe that's his feeling. He feels that way. Doesn't necessarily mean it's um, true, but that's his truth, right? That's everybody goes through their filter. Yeah. And he has really good ideas. And actually, I think he wrote some good songs. I feel like some of their big hits and I couldn't tell you which satisfaction, maybe no satisfaction. Was that one of his songs? Would that be part of it? Anyway, that's one of the few thong songs. I'm not a big Stones fan, but that's one of the few songs I like. Um, okay, Brian, what else was going on? Okay, now I'm getting more agitated. I'm feeling like sharp things to my left and there's not this joy anymore. This is like, it's very pointed. I feel like like lines are coming at me, like sword-like. It could be verbal, it could be energy. It doesn't feel soft and fuzzy. It feels very, and I think he didn't back down. I feel like he's, not necessarily the instigator of it all, but it feels like he did not back down. He wouldn't, um, he had determination to just do what he wanted to do. And, but my sense is because he felt like an outsider, he already had, he went into this relationship on, um, in a deficit kind of thing. Um, and he always felt less than, or, um, for whatever reason, maybe childhood stuff, because he thought it was his way out of that pain-ish, whatever that those were, that feeling of not being seen or heard or create. And then, okay, so now we're moving through getting popular. I see, why do I see George Harrison? He's not a stone, but I see somebody, maybe it's just George Harrison-like hair. I don't know if they were friends. I love George Harrison. He was my favorite Beatle. In fact, um, I have a son named Harrison. I named him after one of the presidents and uh, George Harrison. Anyway, uh, I don't know why I see George Harrison. I don't know if he was there talking to him or what, but he, um, or maybe it's just that time in the world because they were all coming up around that same time in England. The Beatles and the Stones and that. The I see him going off to the left. He's... He wants to leave the band. So he does. I don't know if they kick him out, but it's not happy. It's he. It's like, um, oh, God, what's the word? It's like I feel like it's he's squeezed. Um, like It's not quite a wall, but there's like a pressure. He's squeezed and it's he can't live in this environment or be in this environment. It feels like there's no room for him there. That's the feeling. It's like there's no room. He can't fit in there anymore. And so, um, what are you doing now, Brian? Oh, you've got all kinds of... Yeah, I see him playing his guitar again. 
electric guitar. Mm. He played bass or guitar, but he's playing and he's coming up with ideas and he's he's in his head. Somebody else with dark hair. I think he wanted to, um, it was not George Harrison, but somebody else with a dark hair, head of hair is, he wants to work with them and he wants to, let me quickly tell you, there's a tree that blows around and this happened the last time. These branches, I look at them and I'm, that's where I go and these branches are moving slowly in the wind and in, as I watch them, it's sort of a hypnotic state, not quite, but, and that's where I'm, I'm kind of focusing on that, my conscious mind, so I can go into this other remote state. So when I look this way, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's just because that's where I go. Um, anyway, he's somebody with dark hair that he wants to collaborate with. Longer dark hair. And he kind of looks like that long face like George Harrison, but not exactly. Kind of Keith Richards-ish at the time. Um, but no, not him. Somebody else entirely. A new person, somebody they know. And he's starting to, but also, this doesn't feel good either. Now I'm moving forward, and he has decided this person and him, it's not going to work out. It's a personality issue. He's, And this could be about when he just isn't seeing right things in life. He's uh, still that irascibleness in this, I don't know if that's a word. He's just so agitated and um, frustrated. He's young. I feel very immature. I feel very immature. Like, I, I don't, um, I was just like, I want it my way. Why can't I have it my way? That's the feeling I get. It's like a kid going, I want this. He's not right in his mind about how to create and grow stuff I'm not saying everybody else is innocent but that's where I'm feeling it in his head and uh, Brian what happened oh yeah he just was getting high he was smoking like it was um what is it I'm not, I don't do drugs so I don't know but it wasn't just um you know, pot and alcohol. It was higher level drugs, like like you'd smoke crack, even though I don't know what that would have been back then. But that's what I see, like a, a crack pipe. So something happened higher level like that. He really got high and um, didn't think he was going anywhere. He just liked the feeling. Not like he wanted to kill himself or anything. Just drown because he was immature. Okay, now that you're on the other side, what do you need us to know or what would you, well, he's glad to be here. He's glad you're talking to him because he feels like he's forgotten, feels like nobody ever remembers him. And I see him as an old man, like a white haired old man. Not that that was him, but um, did you come back right away? No, it's like his soul is like this white haired, like 50 year old dude, like kind of like Tim Walls kind of character like that. Although Tim Walls is 60 now, but um, kind of pudgy, like wiser, like I learned. What were you supposed to learn? I see him sliding through like shooting into this life like a, a, a quite a bigger than a sword like a giant piece of metal shooting through into this life like hot, like like I can picture him when he was born screaming the whole way you know on you know his mother not that that happened I don't know but this is he had to shoot into this life with that energy Again, same like Jim Morrison. It's he's angry from the time before, so he brought that into this world, and he had to reconcile that anger. So he came into a family, maybe that had anger issues and stuff like that, and so he came in with that 
and he was supposed to heal himself the soul path or the nodes or his um you know his, his to evolve he was supposed to manage that better or learn from it he doesn't really have any lessons that he wants to share with us it was his personal thing he's like i wasn't i didn't get over that and i had this opportunity to be creative and see things on a higher level and to lift my soul up to that beautiful creative space the artists and poets and musicians all go and express that and heal myself but i i didn't so he's another one he's on the other side i think he's getting ready to come down again i know it's been many years like 50 some years but i feel like he he might even come down as a little blonde girl i see a little blonde girl so he may have come down into that life but it's not about anger this time it's about something else another soul um karmic release some sort of healing that he's ready to do again it's like he almost needs this life to calm down. He almost needs that little blonde girl life to calm down. Um, somewhere in Europe, German or something like that. He needs to have her calm down. So he's got to re, kind of restart a little bit, get a little taste of that kind of energy. And then he might another time, don't know. That'll be up to him, his soul contract. But very interesting. Uh, yeah. So tell me what you think. But hopefully now he's at, he's soothing. I feel like all those prickly things, they're getting smooth in this next life that he's in now. All right, Marilyn Monroe. Um, okay, I'm leaving Brian behind. Wish you well. Norma Jean. Norma Jean. Elton John's Candle in the Wind. Norma Jean, all of those, so heartfelt. Musicians and artists really understand each other. It's because you get that. Like there's, side note, the movie Rent, which I love. It was created by Jonathan, I can't think of his name. I'll put it on here. Um, wrote it right before he died. It's like a version of... Um, La Boheme, but modern day AIDS and that kind of stuff. And uh, there's a song in it. One, one song, one glory. And that's what all artists want. Just that one, one moment. And uh, that one thing that you can leave behind the legacy. So I think, you know, many people, musicians and artists just want that one thing. Many people, they can continue to to do that but one book you know anyway I know that's something I want to leave behind okay Marilyn Norma Jean I see her I feel like I'm sitting in dirt like a child like kind of dark haired child I don't know if she had dark hair as a kid like little kid like two or three playing in the dirt not unhappy I'm fine but I don't it feels very poor it was very poor um I feel kind of alone okay Norma Jean let's see what's going on here all right well you know when some people have um something wrong with their legs uh and they have to, like, if they have a spinal surgery and they have to learn to walk again. They have braces on their legs and they put them on these railing things. And you have a therapist that walks behind them to help them walk. That's what I see her doing. I don't think she had, like, you know, paralyzed or anything. But it's almost like it could be a symbol of her learning to walk, learning to uh, be strong or learning to be on her own. And not be um, weak. That's not it. Anyway, I see her getting up on these railings and learning how to walk. Kind of like somebody that's polio. Kind of like that. I don't think she had polio. That makes no sense. 
Um, so she's walking and she's okay. Now she's a teenager and she's very beautiful. And all these men are looking at her and she finds her way out. Um, she loves people looking at her. She feels good. She feels proud. She feels sexy and attractive and beautiful. And she loves, loves, loves the attention. I feel this finally, like kind of a relief in a way, like they see me. Because that little child in the dirt, I don't, I don't know if she was cared for or if she was like a non, she was just there. Um, and I think she had a little bit of trauma, you know, just abandonment things. Not a little, probably a lot. So she is being seen. Oh, and these guys love her and she's feeling very sexy. And I know just from what I know, she started off like doing little, um, m not like Miss America, but something local stuff like Miss County bride, Miss County princess or whatever it is. And so she had a couple of those Miss Bathing Suit Beauty or whatever. But I feel like she's just, I feel my hair is kind of brown and fluffy a longer, um, She loves it. And she wants to take everything in. <clears throat> um, who does this remind me of? Somebody taking everything in. Mm, there's another celebrity I saw doing that. Eating everything, taking it all in. There's never enough. I forget who that was. But that's the feeling I get. It's like there's never enough. She's taking the world and getting as much in, getting as much in. It's like love and love and... Um, attention attention love and she's feels healthy she just wants that she wants to get as much as she can um some of it's even food she never got like certain things that she as a child she never saw like fancy things fancy food fancy drinks fancy um places clothes she's loving all of that and um and now she's in Hollywood or she's being seen or discovered. Her hair's blonde now. Um, <clears throat> oh, now I'm standing still. That's funny. Before I was moving and going and absorbing. Now I'm standing still like a statue. Hmm. I can't be myself. I have to be this like statue of like the Venus de Milo or something or... Botticelli's Venus or something like that. I'm standing still. They have to look at me and I I feel like a piece of meat now. Before, it was attention. I had, I was contr I had control over my life. Now it feels like I'm a I'm just a statue and a thing. Um but she doesn't know how to handle it. She can't say no. I feel like she can't say no. So to get over this um, feeling of, it's almost like she doesn't exist. She feels like she doesn't exist anymore. She goes back to that feeling of when she was a tiny kid where she doesn't exist. Even though she's got this facade and she's beautiful and she knows people love the way she looks. And she, she has moments of like, oh, feels good. It feels good when she's free. But this time it's like, no, she became... Um, just a, a, like I said a piece of meat or a statue or something to look at and she wanted to be worth more but it was really hard for her to navigate she couldn't figure out between the powers at the studios and uh, it was like she was really kept in like a cage a little bit like she couldn't so she really wanted to branch out and do things that weren't attractive or that made her feel more alive um, and like do smart things. She wanted to do things that were not just how she looked. Um, hmm. And she's fine with me talking to her because I was wondering if she was hard to get to, but she's fine with it. I'm just following her journey. Ugh, I feel depressed. I feel like I'm dropping to the ground, like crying. Um, like, 
I feel this sense of frustration. It makes me want to cry myself because it's so, I can't get out of this. It's like she's trapped. Um, and it's a weird mix because all these great things around her, beautiful, she looks pretty, richness, um, fancy clothes, places, trips. Um, what would you have done different? She said, I wouldn't have signed up with the studios when I did. I would have done things different. I would have been in more control. I would have signed up with a different company or a different place or a different studio or something different so I would have more control over my life. Um, all right, let's go into those later years. Oh, she's very proud of her acting. She's very proud of it. She feels like she's doing, she said some of my roles weren't great, but some of them are really good. Um, and she's really proud. Even the moments in the the movies, she's proud of people don't see, but she's really proud of that. She can look at herself. Go, That's good. I did that. I made this expression or I made people, I wanted to get this emotion across and I did it. So she's proud of herself. So she was growing. She was growing even within her frustrated place. But it grew this frustration and this in this powerlessness feels like it's growing within her at the same time. She has these opportunities, but it's getting cloudier. I feel like it's getting darker. She's saying, I wanted to look like a real person. Eventually, she wanted to look like a real person. Um, not so made up like a doll. Um, she wanted to be beautiful, but she wanted to feel like a real person. Like the movie Seven Year Itch. How did you? Well, she said that was still back in the day where she felt like she was on, you know, and she was this robot just doing, even though she knew what to do. It was like she had a, she knew all the cues. She knew how to make herself feel sexy or show sexy. And she knew how to trigger people and make them like her. So she had all those already. So she, um, that was in her powerful days, she said. That's when I still had some power, but became more and more restrictive because they wanted to keep me there. Hmm, okay. Hey, what about John Kennedy? I forgot about John Kennedy and Robbie, or Bobby. Mm. Yeah, she's, she definitely slept with John Kennedy for entertainment purposes only. No, she, he, I feel like when I'm looking at him, he looks at her like a piece of, you know, something. And I see Frank Sinatra there too. Are they in the same place at the same time? Um, but he looked at her like that and she really respected his intelligence and she wanted that for herself. She wanted to be seen as intelligent and he didn't. He just looked at her like movie star. Uh, and that really hurt her. So why? What happened? He had people around him. Sinatra, there's mob guy. There's his people. They're dark people. They're kind of not good people that are managing. They're like his entourage. I feel like Sinatra or... I don't know. There's mob people. Um, are they with? There's a connection between Sinatra's people and Kennedy's government people or his legal people. But there's, um, yeah, she knows Frank Sinatra, but she's, they're not, I don't know. She's, if he's not interested in her and he was married to, Mia Farrow at the time, or was that later? Ava Gardner? I forget. Anyway, um, no, she is just sad because he's treating her like shite. And so he's she's got to leave the picture because she's going to cause too much trouble and make too much noise. And the uh, happy birthday, Mr. President, was the 
final straw or the the scary thing. They were scared of her because she was so volatile, not volatile, but unpredictable. And I don't think she would have said anything. She didn't want to say anything like out him or anything like that. But she just was, she wanted life to be different at that point. She was ready to move on. Um, by then though, she was using a lot of injectable drugs. I feel like there's a lot of injectable drugs um, in her, not just pills. I don't know what they were doing. Um, but she, it was at the time when, you know, producers and managers were given movie stars, lots of, you know, things to help you lose weight, speed and all kinds of drugs. So initially it was fine. Did you kill your, did you take your own life? Did you jump out of the building? She was out of it. She was drugged. And I don't see her doing it herself. They drugged her. I don't know this for a fact. This is what I'm feeling. I feel like she's in bed. And they pick her up and toss her. Yeah, it's some crime people that, you know, some mob, you know, people that are on the edges or even in the middle. Um... And he feels bad. John F. Kennedy feels bad. But it's almost like he only had, he didn't want to know about it when it was happening. Oh, makes me not like him. Anyway, she, her lesson. Let's see, Marilyn, what did you want us to know? I'm going to pull this one right here. Ten of Wands. She was exhausted by the end. She was really tired. And she was at... She had felt like this burden was so much to carry. So that's why she was doing a lot of drugs and stuff. She, would you have gotten clean if you had, no, mm -mm. she wasn't going to go get clean. Not that it, redemption is impossible, but at that moment in time, it wasn't in her path, pathway. She wanted just to stay in this kind of numb world. Isn't that funny? I see this crow again. Well, she, uh, and page of cups she wanted to fly away she's like imagine me flying imagine me free because i got free because i was so but imagine me free and flying away and imagine me going towards the sun and um having that love all around me and feeling that sense of pure um, pure spirit, God's love, I'm being satisfied. And that's what happened after. She was free. Um, what, were you, what were you supposed to be learning? She came from the same kind of life. It was like another life where she had poverty, abandonment, like nobody's take, nobody's seeing me kind of thing. It was just a regular person. I pictured somebody in Asia, a little kid in Asia, but I don't know what that means. But um, she had the opportunity to be seen. So she picked a life. Her sole contract was to get to be seen, but it was almost the feeling I get, it was at the beginning of this journey of healing. So when you have your nodes in your chart, sometimes your south node is heavily aspected where you come in with a lot of old stuff from lots of lives and your north node is barely touching into a, a new life that or a new healing challenge. So you come into this life with all of these previous lives that are really dominant. And so for you to to move forward and leave that behind karmically, it's harder. She was at that place. She wasn't where it's near the end of many lives where she was releasing it for the last time. This was the more of the beginning stages of her um, feeling um, seen and being free. She had a lot of restrictive uh, lives before this poor, non-existent person feeling. 
and this life she um, chose to come in and have this spotlight on her to possibly get free but she had to manage that or navigate it in a way that would be um, healthy and she came into the world when and she chose a path when you know people were shining the light on her but then it became very restrictive and she couldn't get out of it necessarily but that's just the beginning stages so she'll she's well, she's moved on to learning more and more have you gone she's definitely free I feel like she's flying or she was flying um you want people to know that you're never alone you have to remember go back in time to your soul to your time before you were born and know that you're always loved um, she said, that's what I have to do is I know I'm always loved, but it's taking me lots and lots of lives and I'm still figuring that out. Um, and to be loved for not just how you look, but who you are inside. She was getting there, but she got lost in the drugs and alcohol and frustrations of life. Some life, I see green fields wherever she is, a young man, like a man, man somewhere, um, quiet, calm, just living. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it has to do with being seen. That might be another karmic, um, pattern that she has to relieve and relieve or release. It may not just be this particular one because, you know, you can have multiple things that are going on in one life. Um, it's a much calmer life. So not, I mean, I feel like this guy's handsome. Like, I think he got her good looks. If that's a thing. I don't know if you can. But I feel like people could look at him. He's like blondish, kind of like a young Ryan, uh, Robert Redford in a way like that, but taller and thinner. Yeah, like that. Good looking. And, uh, but a long time. You know, he's young, like 20 something. Anywho hope that was interesting I found it very interesting I always wondered about what happened with her I was on the fence about how she left us and they say she did it on purpose I do not think so I think she was helped it's like uh, Vladimir Putin people accidentally fall out windows it's like that she didn't um, doesn't mean she would have her life would have ended some other tragic way but I think they made it look like that all right, so the debate happened, the debate, the debate. Now, I did see walls over here and Vance right here. Uh, I'm laughing because it's an image I was going to share with you. And it was a mixed bag. Like I said, it, they would say one of them won and one of them, did, you know, whoever you like, you seem like um, that's who you thought won. And, uh, but there were a lot of independent, undecided voters yet that are still undecided because they feel like nobody made any points enough. Nobody really move the needle that much so I found that really interesting there was a, I mean I was reading an article in the New York Times about these people they they were just frustrated because they felt it was nobody made them change it in their mind um, there was lots of things that Tim Walls could have done more aggressively and he didn't and he kind of you know he fumbled a little bit at the beginning the poor guy eventually he got on his feet and he got running and he uh, you know he did, uh, like, what's his name? Michael Steele this morning said most of the, if there were boxers, it was a very fine boxing match. Vance won most of the rounds, but then the last round, Tim Walls came around and knocked him out. But I would say 80% of the people are, are turned it off by then, unfortunately. So a lot of people didn't even see that. But Bye. Tim Walls will continue to be more pointed. He's just a good person. And I also told you this before, Vance is actually not a bad person inside. He's just had to convert himself into that because of, you know, the orange um, cake, broken cake, dude. <laughs> but <coughs> the other yesterday when I was watching this, I don't know why I was put in mind. If you guys remember, some of you are my age or older, um, Rocky Bullwinkle. There was um, Dudley Do Right and Snidely Whiplash. So Snidely Whiplash was the villain, and he had this dog Mutt Mutley. <laughs> How he was laughing, but Snidely Snidely 
Whiplash is the person that Vance reminded of. And I was like, Snidely Whip Vance. <laughs> and there's a girl he's always tying to the railroad tracks. And, and uh, Dudley Drew Wright has to come and save him. He's a blind guy. It doesn't quite look like Tim Walls, but the comparison was interesting, I guess. So anyway, take it or leave it. I'll put the pictures there. And But I don't think his Vance is that kind of a villain. I think he just... I think his, he's um, gotten diverted and letting his soul path getting polluted, basically, or perverted by you-know-who. Okay. So, but I, I do think that uh, it was a mixed bag, like I said. Now, somebody had said Walls would be over here, and, that, and that's true. He was. But uh, nine of source people are worried the public might be worried or the democrats or both sides i think are worried vance did very polished job three of wands he's they're planning they're planning they're planning they have lots of people out there going yes and i know i've watched too where they have they don't have as near as much money as um harris and walls do um but I just think there's only some undecided people out there that in the swing states that are, may make the big difference. Although, in the end, Harris will win. Just everybody relax. Harris will win. Uh, and it'll there'll be greater um, voters than people believe that will come out. It's going to be a big uh, rushing <laughs> voter, seeing big crowds running across the parking lot like of younger people and women. And some people are going to see this as shocking because I know that's not the typical thing, but the shocking at this, how much things have, they couldn't predict. Yeah. Three of Wands. And there'll be challenges, challenges, challenges in every courtroom, in every state. Maybe not every state, but many states. Anyway, did you see uh, Liz Cheney? They showed her voting. She said, I'm voting for Harris. Everybody, there's so many Republicans. I wish we'd get the balls and say something outright. The more they do, um, the more they things will turn. This is, it's about money. So money and voting. So these um, Republicans who will not speak the name out loud of, you know, that person and say that they're wrong they're worried about losing this money they are scared so the voters bring money and they're scared they're going to lose their seats in congress or the senate and once he loses they won't have to explain anything they'll just move on and so like i don't know i don't know what happened yeah he lost that's in there but yeah so they don't have to look bad to their constituency and they hope it all goes away it will not 100% go away. There'll still be people behind him. Um, last year when I did a video, I see something, somebody even worse coming behind him in a couple of years. Somebody even more like slicker and old, younger. And so I do feel like that person's coming. Now, they don't feel as dangerous, but they feel sneakier, if that makes any sense. Like we won't even be able to recognize it at first. But that's in a couple of years to this year. We'll worry about it. So um, let's look at this is Trump right here, which makes no sense to me. The Empress, he's um, flying over the land saying, this is mine. This is mine. This uh, 160 page brief. Or maybe this is Judge Chuckin. This is her. This is her. She's the one that's where I'm wanting to go with this is how does she see this? She's taking command and she's deciding mother earth kind of thing. She's like, I'm going to decide what grows here. Uh, six of swords. Uh -oh. So she's going to, uh, this is leaving uh, mirth waters for calm. Chuck and will she do much? No, I don't see her committing. She has to read it and really dissect this brief before she makes any opinions. 
or makes any decisions. And then they'll appeal it and they'll, Jack Smith will appeal it. But what I did see in the past, and you guys know this, is I saw a big dip, dip before the election. Trump is here. The election's here. That big dip in October that Jack Smith was digging. And I think this is part of that. So, and it hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gotten shallower. So there is something that it's going to be hard for Trump to get towards the election. It There will be some change. This is part of it, but it's not going to be the like put him in jail kind of change. It's more of a he'll, um, Judge Tunkin will make some decisions, but I don't see her doing it like tomorrow. She's not reading it. I feel like she needs a week. She's going to read it for about a week or more. Um, she really wants things to move fast. Yeah, she's going to make a decision pretty quick considering all that, those pages. Actually, I don't know why. I feel like she's got a lot of clerks on it and she's having them help her like decide, like break it up into sections and go through it and they can report to her. I don't know why I see that with this Ace of Cups. And actually, and that's the beginning of her. And then she's got all these decisions to make. Um, they'll be confusing. Will she make any decisions anytime soon? I see in like, I see seven days and then there's a black line and, um, I would say two thirds to three quarters she'll agree with in the brief. The rest of it, I think she'll put as presidential immunity or a sign or make it, it's nebulous. It's not specific enough or something. Um, that's the feeling I get, but free will and all that. All right. Two pentacles. Yep. More deciding, more deciding. And, uh, yeah, this is the part that she's not a hundred percent on. She's still not a hundred percent on what she's going to do. Hmm. King of Pentacles. Queen of Cups. I think Jack Smith is a Gemini, but it doesn't matter. Um, I feel like he's very hardcore, like somebody who's real strong, grounded, doing what's right, um, leading in a very tangible, pragmatic way. I think that's him. And the Queen of Cups. Page of Swords, information, cutting out all the, the information that's not accurate. Okay. Let's check. I'm going to do the tower. Oh, it's going to be surprising in a good way. Oh my gosh, again with the six of pentacles. So again, keeping, here's the, the uh, scales of justice. Keeping what works, getting rid of what doesn't. It's actually going to be surprising. I think she's I think she'll keep two thirds or three quarters of what he's suggesting. And I think it'll be a week or so or less even today's Thursday. Like, yeah, within a week, but I think her clerks are helping her. I think she wants to do this fairly quickly. I feel like, okay, judge Chuck, I'm going to get in her energy. I haven't done a dessert on judge, Chuck, judge Chuck. And I see an orange, I see a big orange, like a literal orange. Um, which is like a sun, but like a navel orange. Solid, nothing. What's it? An orange <laughs> cut or anything. Uh, see her separating, putting these papers here. This is what I got to concentrate on. This is going over there. I can't deal that with right now. I'm going to do it with this right now. Um, thank you for doing what you're doing. How can... She feels the weight of the country on her. She feels the weight of this decision on her. But she's very non, um, like emotion, not emotional, but not, like not emotional about it. Like not 
happy, sad, um, but not down or confident or anything. It's more like, this is what we have to do. I feel the weight. I feel the power. I feel the, I have to be super, very thoughtful, kind of like um, Mershon in the, the other case. Hmm. I feel like she's rolling her orange and she's stamping these papers. Like, even though it's doesn't stamp, but I feel like her, it's like she's approving these. She's approving these. She's rolling her orange and she's approving those. These over here, she's going to put aside for now. Doesn't mean they're wrong. She just feels like they're not strong enough argument. She's worried for her security and she knows his lawyers are going to, you know, appeal. But she's doing it very matter-of-factly, like, okay, come here. This is what you have to do. This is what I see. This is where this is going. And you'd think they'd want to drag it out so it'd get closer to the election. Queen of Swords, Emperor, which I think of as a you-know-who a little bit. Chariot. But actually, I think it's going to move quickly. Um, not, nothing's going to be decided before the election, but the appeal process. They're, they'd be ready to argue it. Mr. GJT, how are you feeling? He's separate. He's letting his lawyers deal with it. He um, It's very small. He feels very, like, way over here, and they're doing their thing over here. So he's not close to the situation is what I'm perceiving that to be. How is your mind? Like I said before, he's not tracking. He's using old lingo, like when your grandmother starting to get dementia, she says old phrases that you think, oh, she's normal. But it's just, it's like, a, it's broke, not broken record, but it's old parts of his brain that are just repeating. His logical sense in his brain is moving. It's going away. It's, it's not, um, it's fading. The logical part. Um, how do you think J.D. Vance did? I thought he did all right. Yeah, I think he thought he did all right. He wanted him to be more, you know, hit him harder. But he thought he did okay. What if you don't win the election? What are you going to do? I see him going on a magic carpet. <laughs> like, not after, though like before like he's gonna sneak out before I think he's got multiple plans multiple plans multiple plans in place in the past I've seen um, Russia give him a place or these places somewhere Middle East handing him a location to go to See him on a magic carpet, you know, like Aladdin, which I know. But I think he sees before the election this white light around it, like he's not going to be able to win death. He's not dying or anything, but I do feel like he's he's going to end it, even though he'll say that he's going to watch it and he'll believe. But I think as we get closer to the election, I think the polls are going to get more and more um, clear. Not by a lot more, but somewhat more. And there's going to be some more information that I think he's going to find out that is going to make him want to prep for the exit. Because once he's not elected... I just can't see him being able to leave the country before the election. I feel like it's going to be like that night, like he's going to be on a plane as it's happening or have it ready, something like that. If you guys have any more questions, thank you for coming by. Um, I love doing that remote stuff. And if you um, want other people like that, let me know. And comments and likes and shares. Till next time.